Hello, friends and clients of Walker Gates Bella. I am Jennifer Walker Gates, immigration attorney, and I'm here today with my colleague and associate, Diego Nunez. Hey, Diego. Hi, Jennifer. We're going to talk about how you should talk about arrests with USCIS and other immigration agencies. Past arrests, past detentions, whether those be criminal arrests or detentions at the border, there is a, a specific strategy that people need to use when addressing these things with immigration in order for to be successful in your case. And Diego and I have seen lots of clients do it the wrong way. And so after many years of dealing with these kinds of issues with our clients, we have a, a kind of a three-pronged approach that we're going to share with you today. Before we get into the three-pronged approach, I just want to take a moment and encourage all of our viewers to hit subscribe to our channel. Um, we are providing this kind of update on a regular basis. We want every immigrant in the United States who is deserving of status to be able to get that status as smoothly and with as few complications and delays as possible. And so we are here to provide information about how to do that. So please hit subscribe and share our channel with anyone you know who might benefit. The three prongs would be number one, talk to an attorney if you've ever been arrested before you file, before you apply for anything, talk to an attorney. Number two, disclose, disclose, disclose. And number three, stick to the facts. Our number one recommendation, if you've ever been arrested, talk to an attorney. Diego, have you seen clients who moved forward with an immigration case when they had an arrest history without an attorney and kind of like how that turned out? <laughs> what, have you, so, what has your experience been in that regard? Uh, so yes, I've done a lot of consultations, a lot of it relating to naturalization, to citizenship, where people went on their own to do their, their interview and uh, a criminal issue, uh, an arrest, a conviction comes up for one reason or another, the officer may have become upset or it may have led them to deny or to require them to return, you know, for another interview. And even when the case or the particular criminal case was not a deportable offense, the demeanor of the officer changing when he or she would become aware of the arrest or the type of arrest. Sometimes it would get uh, the client so flustered that they were unable to properly explain themselves to the point where maybe the officer would say, you know what, I don't think you're understanding this. I don't think your English is good enough. You're going to have to come back. And so yeah. then I would- Or I think you're that. lying is obvious from our three-pronged approach. <laughs> We've, um, we've really broken this down into a, a simple system for dealing with this issue. I mean, there's no strict formula that uh, every case is unique. If you don't have any idea about that, about properly go through the process with arrest history, you can really make a mess mm -hmm. of the situation. And that's, yeah, I've seen that a number of times as well. You know, what I was going to say is, so, so if you do have a prior arrest, you have to talk to an attorney, but you also have to understand what is an arrest. People are under the false impression that once a case might be dismissed, or maybe once you finish probation, that that goes away. I think that that idea of, of it going away is, is really maybe something more from like a misunderstanding of what a criminal defense attorney might be saying. Sort of like, you know, once you finish, this same charge can't be used against you to punish you again at a later date. That punishment has gone away. That doesn't mean that the arrest has been erased. Uh, from history. You have to disclose it, even if it didn't lead to a conviction. That's we right. need to understand what we're looking at when we're going in there, because a criminal history or lack of disclosure can lead to your case getting denied. And that leads to the second prong of our of our three prongs, right? Which is disclose, disclose, disclose. You got to tell your attorney that you were arrested. You have to tell immigration, even if the case was expunged, even if the case was dismissed, even if it didn't turn into anything, even if it happened 
if it was in a, a detention by immigration agents and not a criminal arrest, all of those things have to be disclosed at every stage of your case. They have to be disclosed on the applications. They have to be disclosed in the interviews. And even <clears throat> if they go away on the criminal side, they never go away on the immigration side. For example, in Texas, if your record is expunged because of state law, you can truthfully testify that you've never been arrested if your case has been expunged. So that, but that would be in state court. Uh, with immigration, that's not how it works. And often they'll have uh, maybe a, a record of that arrest, even though that should have been erased from your record. It might have come up in a background check when you were renewing your your permanent resident card, but it wasn't enough to matter. So, so it may not have uh, created any kind of issue at that time. But then when you're interviewing for, again, your naturalization, the lack of disclosure of that and the knowledge that it happened could be enough to deny you your citizenship and you would have to wait for five years. And by disclosing, it also means having a record or attempting to get the records to show the result of the case. That brings me to the third prong, which is when you're talking about arrests of any sort, you have to have documentation and you have to stick to the facts as it they are elaborated in the documentation. It is really important not to go off into your story about what happened and why you were arrested and how it all turned out. Rather, simply state, I was arrested on such and such date and charged with X and the disposition of the case was Y. I got probation for six months, or it was dismissed, or I took a class and then it was dismissed, or I was in jail for 30 days, or whatever the disposition is, that's it. You don't ever need to talk about, you don't need to answer any question really, except the ones that the officer is asking. And all they want to know is why were you arrested? And what was the disposition of the case? Occasionally they'll ask for a little more detail, but very rarely. Generally, they just want to know what the documents show and they want you to say something that they can and confirm in the documentation. Diego, have you seen clients make a big mess in this regard as well? So yes, uh, and, and one of the things that I that we always say, let's say the question again is, have you ever been arrested? The answer is yes or no. Uh, sometimes clients want to start with an explanation. Correct. Uh, and so then it will be, the officer was racist or my, my boyfriend or my girlfriend is crazy and they called the police and none of this was true. Don't do that. Answer the question, directly and then you know the outcome of the case uh and if you're represented i mean I, we're going to go over that and we're going to explain how best to answer that and if there's any confusion us as attorneys that's where we step in and explain well you know this is not a deportable crime and the result of the crime was not technically dismissed it was a deferred adjudication and this is what it means and that's that's why you got to have an attorney to to be able to explain that at the time of the interview because some Sometimes we feel that, well, there's there should be no issue. I've traveled, I've come into the through customs, no one's ever said anything about my arrest. But how you answer at a particular point and the way that you do it, you can either, you know, be denied for not disclosing it. Maybe they think that you were not being truthful and the consequences just multiply. In our experience, many clients have arrests on their records that don't actually make them ineligible for immigration benefits or don't make them deportable. But then the failure to disclose is the thing that causes the most complications. Again, because they think you're lying or you end up saying something that like somehow implicates yourself even further when you, you know, and it, it just can cause delays and complications in your case. So again, I'm just going to repeat the three steps, if you have, if you are applying for any immigration benefits and you've ever been arrested, let's just clarify really quickly also what we mean by arrested, right? An arrest means that you were taken into police custody. It means now a detention can be you were just stopped on the side of the road and asked questions. That can be a detention. But an arrest means you were actually taken into police custody. You may or may not have been put into handcuffs. You may or may not have been put in the back of a police car. Sometimes it can, an arrest can occur when you're going to renew your driver's license and you'll just be taken to a separate room or something like that. Regardless of what happens, it 
you you may be detained by an officer for shoplifting and you and it may not be where you are put in handcuffs or you're put in the back of a police car, but you're issued a ticket for shoplifting. And technically that would count as a detention and certainly a citation. And so those are the kinds of things, any encounter with law enforcement of any sort really has to be disclosed. And first you have to talk to an attorney. You have to disclose it to an attorney. That's our first recommendation. Let the attorney analyze the situation carefully and then help you get through the rest of your case with that information in hand. Number two, disclose, disclose, disclose. If your attorney isn't disclosing it, make sure they are. Remind them, you know, when you're applying for your visa and then later you're applying for your residency and then later you're applying for renewal of your residency and then later you're applying for your naturalization. These things happen years and years apart and the attorney is going to see thousands of clients in between them. They may not always remember everything that's on your criminal record. They may or may not have still have records from your earlier case that they can review carefully. So it's on you to let them know, tell your attorney, disclose, disclose, disclose at every step of your case to immigration. And then finally, stick to the facts as they appear on the documents for your case. Do not go into explanations about you know, how you were with friends that were a bad influence on you. And, you know, it really wasn't yours or, you know, your children are the ones that put the stuff on the stroller or in your purse. And then you walked out and you didn't know. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that story for shoplifting arrest. It doesn't matter. Just say I was arrested for shoplifting. I took a class and the case was dismissed or whatever the disposition was. Those are the kinds of succinct explanations that are best for your immigration case. I hope that was clear. Diego, what else is there anything else that i've left off that we need to let people know no i there's nothing it was very succinct and clear and direct i think that uh we <laughs> don't need to add to it so thank you good. thank you yes okay good well i hope it's been helpful if anyone viewing this has a past arrest by immigration or by the police and you want to understand how that affects your eligibility for immigration benefits, please reach out to us. This is an area that we have a lot of experience and expertise with, and we're always happy to help. At our website, walkergatesvela.com, there is a button you can click and you can schedule an appointment directly with uh, Diego or directly with me. Our number is also there. If you would prefer to just call the office, they can also help you get scheduled. Um, and we will be happy to take a look at your case and give you the best information that we possibly can for how to deal with the situation. Thank you so much, Diego, for taking your time to share again with us i appreciate it and um you know stay out of jail i will and if i get in jail i'll let you know i'll tell you all thank about you it. thank you but don't call me until after you're already out all right I will. <laughs> all right have a good one and we'll talk again soon